Hello and welcome back to our RTS series. In this episode we're going to continue working on our actors ability to attack each other and setting up the ability for them to stop attacking when they notice their enemy target has died or is too far away as well as allowing us to maneuver around and escape our targets as well. So let's go into this setup. So for this we need to make a slight adjustment to our unit behavior. So unit behavior at the moment is simply just doing this where we're doing a um, blackboard key check for the attack and then doing the attack animation. We're going to add another decorator on here which is going to check to see the viability of our target. So is our target alive, too far away, etc. So here we make a new custom decorator. So click on new decorator up top and this one comes up. I'm just going to rename this one. So we're going to here is target available and we're going to go in here so when creating a decorator the most important thing you need to do is set up the ability to override its perform condition check this is the thing that's going to allow it through the node and execute its uh, connected branches so we're going to do the perform condition check AI and basically if this is true return value that means it's going to allow it through if it's false it's going to block it so from here we're going to set up the uh, check to see if the target is alive still so when we kill our targets we're actually unpossessing them so what I'm going to do is simply just check if they're being possessed so uh, we're going to get the target we're currently facing so that is going to come from their target actor that this thing is attacking now the target actor is set on the individual units so if I go to the unit base here and uh, we go to where we click on it up here here you can see we are setting the target actor uh, variable so we need to change that uh, to match this so we're going to go to the uh, is target available and we're going to take the controlled pawn and going to cast to our unit base and from there we're going to check our target so get target actor so that's who they're currently attacking so when I'm doing that I then want to see if this one is possessed now the way you do that is just see if it has a controller so go uh, get AI controller and you check if that is a valid or not it is valid and that be this one here and that will go into our return value here so if it's valid great let it through if not block it so that's going to go through to this and like so compile that and we're done here for this very basic setup here we'll be adding to this in a moment so don't worry so let's go back to our behavior tree and we're going to add our new blackboard here to uh, our own decorator here to our attack target. So go add decorator and you want to find the uh, is target available. And click on that and drag that above there. So it's going to check if target is available first and then it'll do the rest of it. Okay. And hit save. So now if I push play, when they go to attack their target, they will stop attacking their target when uh, they die so that goes through there and there you go he has now stopped attacking his animation so next thing we're going to do is we're going to make it so that when my character runs away he also stops attacking so we're going to take this and run away and you get this issue at the moment so at the moment because he's getting attacked by him and he's got his target set I want him to run away and keep running away and I want this guy to give chase so let's go back and take a look at this so the first thing we'll do is set it up so that when we right click on the environment we're going to tell it to basically not attack and just run away so let's go to our player controller and we're looking at the right mouse button click um, so when I click on the right mouse button here like so we're setting the target location for it to move which is great but then I'm also going to change its enum uh, for its um, attack a uh, action enum here so let's take this and 
that is set to uh, the blackboard key E action enum. So let's take that on here. So we've got get blackboard. We we'll do set value as enum. And the key for this, we're going to do make literal. And that was called E action enum. And the enum value here, I'm going to drag out and just do E action and do a literal enum E action. And I can just choose it to tell it to wait. So, as well as changing the enum, we also need to change their senses because when we move it away, it's going to still see the other actors and then we'll immediately try to target them. Now, we can't just take away the sense entirely because if they're standing still and they get attacked, uh, like see incoming uh, enemies, they want you want them to retaliate. What we don't want to happen though is when we're trying to get our character away from danger to run straight back into it. So, we're going to do a calling off period. So, when we click on it and tell it to move, it's going to call off its sight sense and then after that time, it'll set it back on. So we're going to make that function in our AI controller. So let's go to AI controller here and we're going to set up here a custom event to um, uh, we'll do site call off. OK, and what this is going to do is we're going to take the AI perception out and then from there we're going to do set sense enabled and this allows you to turn senses off and on but only if they've been previously configured uh, configured so on the here i've already got site configured here so that's totally fine i can just choose the site config here and i'll leave it disabled here then i want to do a timer so i'm going to do a set timer uh, by event and on here we're going to make a custom event to enable site so enable site and basically going to do the exact same thing but we're going to turn it on and the time here is however long you want it to that calling off period be so let's say five seconds okay now every time i do move though this is going to restart this timer so if i'm clicking it basically means it has to not be clicked to told to go anywhere for five seconds so I'll hit compile and save that Go back to our RTS controller and now we need to call that function. So from that we're going to grab our array element here and drag right across here, get the AI controller and then cast that to our particular unit AI controller, cast to unit AI. And we can now do the site call off. Okay, hit compile and save that. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to make our AI be able to chase each other. Now at the moment, the way attacking works is they'll run to the target where they are and do the attack and it will hit you no matter where you are because it's not based on distance. So what we're going to do is tell it to be based on distance. So let's go to our uh, applied damage event. So on our behavior tree, we're playing at the animation. We go to the animation there. You can see where we call it and there's the attack target notification and we go in there and open notify blueprint and this is calling the attack we're going to attack and there is our applied damage now for this we just want to check the distance between the target actor and my character so let's drag this out here so when it calls the attack we want to get the distance from this get distance two and the self here Okay, and if that distance is less than or equal to, uh, let's say, 300, we're going to put this into a branch and say that this is okay to do. True. Otherwise, on the force of this branch, we're going to tell it to change its location. So we're going to get the blackboard from this, target being itself. And on the blackboard, we're going to set value as vector and plug that into false. The key name, we're going to make literal and put it in as 
target location. And that value there is going to be this target actor's location. So drag this out, get actor location, and plug that into that there. Okay, it's a bit messy. Let's see if we can tidy this up a little bit. Like so. There we go, it's a little bit better. Okay, so that's now setting that target location. So they now should run and chase after you. So they would go to this and target location now will allow it to go through here because this is inverted. So if it's not at that location, it will do this move too. So let's see that working. If I hit play here and move him away, you see they give chase. Okay, and there they go. Brilliant. So that's him giving chase to you and running away. Now, if you're giving chase to you for too long, you may want to make them turn around and stop. Uh, but for now, we're going to leave them like that so they'll just keep on going. Um, next thing we'll do is make it so that when they are attacking, they are facing each other. So at the moment, you saw there that they have the chance to attack uh, but not face their. Uh, target. So what I'm going to do there is go to the unit class, unit base, and when they do the attack here, we're going to tell them to set their rotation to focus on that target. And we've got target actor because that's already part of this. So here we're going to uh, get AI controller, controlled actor itself. And we're going from there, set focus. And you want to set focus. And the new focus is going to be target actor. We'll plug that down there. And like so, so when it is trying to do the attack, it will now do that apply damage. And you saw there he just turned around. I don't know if you caught that. So if I run away. We have to clear the focus as well, so I forgot to do that. But you can see how he's going to turn around now and do that. Okay. Cool. So let's clear the focus and then that be it for this. So when we do click somewhere on the screen to move, like here, we're going to tell it to clear focus. So we'll just do it from here. So this would be the same one, it would be totally fine. And here we'll do clear. Uh, focus. Uh, not clear focus. Uh, yeah, yeah, clear focus. That's the right one. Yeah, sorry. My bad. And let's just test that final thing out. So click on the character here. Run away. And you can see he's now facing the correct location. I can go and click on this one to attack. And he'll attack this one. there we have it. So now we've got our enemies attacking each other and we've got our base building, we've got our spawning of enemies and so forth. Uh, in the next episode we'll be working on the actual game itself. So how do you know when you've won? By destroying the capital building. I'm going to set up the ability for you to destroy the building. If you're able to destroy the building then you win the game. So join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can watch that part plus many other videos well before anyone else, as well as many other benefits too. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.